All right, something a little bit different on Team 33 this week. Um, last week was Marcus Babel, and we were talking about Germany, Liverpool, Bayern Munich, but this time we're going somewhere further away, maybe that's not always highlighted, and uh, Sam O'Shocknessy um, is in studio to enlighten us more on this. So this, um, actually, just to give a bit of background to why you're here, um, your childhood friend is Stephen Doyle, who's an off-the-ball colleague of, yep. of mine, former, I think you've played together at a certain level as well. We lived a couple of doors away in, in Kilnamana, yeah. We, yeah. we played a little bit for Kilnamana. On FC, yeah. We came across this club name called Flanagan's Onions. Obviously, the Flanagan part and both the Onion part as well kind of jumped out to us because it is a very, very random name. And then on Twitter, I think you came across this conversation, and then yeah. this is this is how all this has come about. Yeah, yeah. No, I was surprised to suddenly open Twitter and see a, a photo of the Flanagan's Onions jersey, which I played for Flanagan's on Onions out in Bermuda, so yeah. to see Stephen talking about it, and he was, he, I don't know, I can't even remember the context of it, like, but uh, yeah. I had a photo of myself wearing the jersey that he had put up and, and sent it to him, so I think that's how it started. Yeah, um, so to give a bit of background, so Flanagan, Flanagan's Onions is a Bermudan football club, right? Mm -hmm. So how did you come from here in Ireland to end up kind of living and playing with a club in, uh, in Bermuda? Uh, it, was about, I think it was about 10 years ago, I was... Working here in Dublin, wanted to get out of Dublin, uh, looked for jobs around the, the world or whatever, and yeah. a, a job came up in Bermuda. So uh, I headed out there. I'd, I knew a friend of mine who had gone out the year before, so gave her a call. I said, how are you getting on? She said, oh, loves it, you know, tropical island out in, out in the North Atlantic. So uh, myself and my girlfriend went out and meant to spend like a year or two there, ended up like five or six years there. So... Um, it's a bit off the beaten track in, in terms of us getting to Bermuda, isn't it? In terms of flights and everything. So, how do you? What's the general journey like? Uh, for yeah, so both a tourist or somebody who's going over to work and live. Yeah, there's there's really two ways to get there. You can either go to London and get a direct flight from London because yeah. it, it is a British colony, colony. Yeah. Um, or you can go to the States, New York, and get a flight from New York down to Bermuda. It's about a two hour flight from New York. So, mm -hmm. New York will kind of be the nearest in the States, and then or or go through London. So, like Bermuda has kind of UK and American influences equally. Yeah. And what's the general size of the Irish kind of contingent that are there, or is there much of a community? Yeah, I think like population, I haven't checked in a while now, but it's about 65, 70,000 in total. Yeah. Um, an expat community then is probably about 15,000. Two Leitrims, where I come from, almost yeah. more or less. <laughs> yeah. so it is very, very small. Yeah. Um, uh, expat's about 15,000. And that would be made up of you know, Irish, English, Scots, Welsh, um, US, Canada, Jamaica, everywhere else. Like, but uh, it's about fifteen thousand yeah. people there. But you know, it's been there for years, so there's kind of a ready-made community. Once you get over there, there's like people who are doing the exact same thing that you are doing, and you can easily just kind of fill in and, and meet meet people. And economically, it's quite a strong kind of nation in a way, even despite its size and everything else. Obviously, through the British influence as well. Yeah, no, it is. It's, um, it's very strong in the insurance industry, which is which is where I work, uh, and tourism because it is a beautiful island. But um, it's quite expensive to live there. Like a pint of milk could be you know, five dollars. Oh, really? Um, so. Now it's a tax-free island, so you're, you're earning well, but you're you're paying a lot of in, in like your basic groceries when you're going in. You're spending a hundred dollars just getting your basics kind of stuff. Yeah. So they've kind of out, outpriced themselves the last couple of years. It's so expensive that the tourists probably don't come as much into the island. Yeah. Um, but they're very strong on their financial services. Kind yeah. Of stuff. And then you touched on the lifestyle. Obviously, it's it's not technically in the Caribbean. It's a little bit uh, further north. But uh, what are we kind of looking at in terms of what people do day to day? And um, maybe is there kind of like a beach culture or that kind of thing? Yeah. So. It's not Caribbean, but similar type culture. Yeah. So it is in the North Atlantic. Um, has its kind of its you know financial services industry, which is very strong, and a lot of Bermudians would work in that as well. Mm. Um, but because the island's so small, you're kind of nine to five. As soon as you're finished, you're on your moped and you're straight to the beach. Like there's a lot of sports on the island. Uh, every kind of sport really there. Like cricket's pretty big, as far as I know, isn't it? That's, that's the biggest sport yeah. uh, in the country. Yeah. And then football will be kind of number two. That's right, yeah. Um, they kind of have their national holidays around cricket. They take a four days off. They do cricket for Thursday and Friday and then they have the Saturday and Sunday off. So it's like a four-day bank right. holiday and it's pretty crazy. Like, yeah. they, they do love their so cricket. So you were based in Hamilton, am I right? Mm. Which, is the, which is actually very small when you look at the population, 1,100, something like that. And obviously Flanagan's Onions are based there as well. Yeah. Um, so the Flanagan's part, that's, that comes from the pub, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. so... 
so I suppose the, the history of the, of, of the club that which is now Flanagan's Onions um, like it used to be a, an office team I think like a, a KPMG or, or one of those kind of yeah. set it up and um, in a kind of an office corporate league and then it moved into a kind of a pub league so there was a pub called MR Onions, Onions yeah I think um, I've seen a picture of the pub now as well. I checked yeah. it out on Google Maps and yes. uh, yeah, loads of Guinness awning and stuff outside. Yeah, it's all the usual stuff yeah. that you'd, you'd see in a kind of an Irish. Well, th- that's the, the Flanagan's one, but there was one called MR Onions initially kind of took it over. I think the name actually came from is people's well, Bermudians are called onions because, oh, really? yeah, because uh, an onion is kind of the only thing that would really grow in the soil in Bermuda. So it was a kind of a strong export. Yeah. Um, so Bermudians got known as the onions, as, as onions, so they were called MRs, like, you know, them are onions, it was called MR onions. So anyway, that was the pub that um, kind of took over that corporate team and put it into a kind of a pub league. And then when that closed down, actually the weekend that I arrived into Bermuda, that pub was closing down and pe- oh, wow. people were taking paraphernalia out of the pub, they were taking the jukebox out of the pub and everything like so uh, Flanagan's was an Irish bar and they decided to take over the, the Onions football team and kind of keep it running because like. it was a big enough club now We'd, it's kind of like the club where all the expats would go and play okay. um, because there's other clubs like and a lot of catchy names here like mm. Flanagan's Onions is catchy because of the Flanagan's part uh, for us over here and obviously the Onions part but there's Dandy Town Hornets am I right and there's yeah. a couple of other kind of names the ex Road Warriors something yeah. like that as well yeah they're all yeah. quite funky names alright um, and yeah. like they do have a Premier League, which is you know run by their the BFA and the Bermuda Football yeah. Association, which would be you know part of FIFA and all that officially official yeah. stuff. So about kind of ten teams in the first division, and then you'd have about ten teams in the Premier Premier, and about ten teams in the first division. And Flanagan's kind of go between the two, really, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. Kind of more of a yo-yo club, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, they kind of they were just a pub team, but we were quite strong. We had kind of three teams within our club. You'd have kind of your A team, your B team, then like a, a Masters kind of over 35s, over 40s. Um, but we got kind of so strong that we said we'd apply for the proper league, the, the yeah. Premier, and they allowed us to do that. Now, they weren't going to because we didn't have a youth system. Mm-hmm. I mean, all the teams had to have a proper youth system, but they let us in. I think they were kind of short two teams, so they kind of let two of the, the commercial league teams, the kind of pub teams, in and see how they get on. But we actually got promoted, I think, after a couple of years, stayed up in the Premier League for probably about two or three years I think last year they just they just got relegated yeah. I, I haven't been there in about five years now which is probably why they've been relegated like, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah it's they're still going I was talking to the uh, the club chairman yesterday I was telling him I was going to do a, a little yeah. piece on it like he was excited because they're actually 30 years this year oh, yeah. uh, established yeah. so um, yeah no, it was good so they, they got a, I don't think anyone expect them to get into the Premier and then stay there but obviously they've been relegated now but it's uh they now have a youth system as well. So three teams, isn't it? Uh, in terms of that within the structure of their club now as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you'd have the Premier or the first division team. You've got a team in kind of the commercial um, corporate league. There's a separate corporate league, and then they have the Masters team. But then they have a youth system as well. Okay. So I think they have an under nines, under eleven, under thirteen, and under fifteens now, which is great because a lot of the lads who I know probably have have kids now as well, so they're starting to put their own kids oh, through yeah. it and that. So. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's great. How do you end up being recruited by the club as well? And how do they tend to do that in Bermuda? Is it just a question of, you know, because as you said, it's more of an expat club in a way and that a lot of people involved would be there probably working. But how do they get uh, kind of attracted to Yeah, the club? So yeah, so like, I would have turned up at my job and for, I mean, the first, I mean, in my job interview, the guy was like, uh, you know, what team do you support? Do you like football? And, you know, do you, do you like... Do you like beach? <laughs> he was going to say no yeah. to that. And then kind of as soon as you get over there, they're saying, look, go and meet this guy. He's, he's in charge of the football team. And then you kind of get straight into the expat team that way. Like, mm. um, But like, there's, there's Bermudians all through the, our team. It's, it's, no, it's no longer an expat team. It's a proper, yeah, kind you know, of mix of, full yeah. member of the Bermuda yeah. Association now. Like, So it's kind of got a bit more serious and it's moved on from its, from its origins. But... Uh, it's funny because it is 30 years old this year. I was, I was talking to the president. He was kind of just going through the. You know, he was kind of yeah. baffled himself about how they've actually changed and stuff like. That. Did the name jump out to you in the same way that it jumped out to me and Steve O in the office? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to play for a club that's called an onion. Like you know, it's just it doesn't sound great until you find out yeah. why they're actually called. What the origin of it is? Onions, yeah, yeah, isn't it? Onions till till we die. Onions till we yeah, die. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a slogan. Yeah, and they they do kind of adopt all of the the usual stuff you'd find in like an English club and that. I mean, yeah. they, they had a 
Ireland Ultras section. I think they call themselves the 255 because... What size would we be talking about in terms of ultras and then maybe just the fans who drift yeah. in and out? Well, so you'd probably have, well, you'd have about three teams in the club and then three squads. So, I mean, whatever amount that is. Ultras would really be uh, just the people who probably used to play for the club and are got too old. So yeah. you're probably talking about 30 people or something like that. But they call themselves the 255 because they'd leave the pub at 255 and go to the match at 3 o'clock. Uh, give themselves five minutes to <laughs> to get up to the match, like. Um, but like they had all that kind of stuff. You know, we'd have end of, end of season dues, and you do Phoenix from the Flames and all that kind of oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, it'd be great. We'd, we'd one guy who's a bit of a Lotario on the island, and I think they filmed them one day coming out of the houses of all the wives of the players on the first team, and they were all in on it, like yeah. kind of giving them a kiss and stuff. And it's just it's a proper. They, they run it like a proper. English club or Irish club or whatever like but, yeah. um, how did you find the standard of play compared to say what you would have played like the levels you would have played at here before mm. going over yeah like I played for Kilnamana schoolboy up to about under 18s um, and in the, the top league in the schoolboy and it was pretty good in that um, it's again you could find because they had three teams you could find your level in it we weren't amazing but we brought something else to it because we played like an Irish and English style. Yeah. So, you know, the Bermudian natural style is more keep it on the ground, pass it. Now, Bermudians are kind of a bit smaller in stature and, and we were kind of bringing more of an agricultural type of football. Um, or that's what, that's what was expected of yeah. us. So, you know, long balls into the box, get the big man out of it, that kind of stuff, hard tackling. But then we kind of developed into, you know, suddenly they could see us playing football, so they're kind of going expecting all these long balls and suddenly we're playing kind of good football. So it kind of worked to our advantage. We could pull on yeah. both, both styles, if you know what I mean. Um, um, we once had a, a Bermudan, well, former Bermudan international of the show, so Clyde Best would be one of the more well-known kind of names. Um, and then obviously I think Sean Goater, yeah. that's where he's from as well. Do these names still resonate there or is it cricket so big that maybe they're... No, no, they're it's like fo- football is probably on a level with cricket. Um, and Sean Goater would be a, a legend on the island. I mean, he'd, he'd be the most famous, obviously. Yeah. You know, feed the goat and, and he will score. Um, yeah, I think there's actually a Bermudian guy playing for Sligo Rovers. Uh, Dante Leverock, I think yeah. it is. Yeah, 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 he's just moved over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I mean, they haven't had a lot of you know famous players, but um, I was looking at their the international team's squad and uh, the spot the, the Sligo Rovers uh, yeah. at the moment. But you'd have them kind of speckled through the first division in, in England and stuff, um, and playing in Bermuda as well. Like a couple in, play for clubs in the states and Canada as well. Like. Yeah, probably got so close. And football culture-wise, in terms of what happens like post-game and things, is it naturally everyone kind of heads towards the pub, or what way was it? Is it uh, well, I guess it's obviously not the Premier League way of having to yeah, ice yeah. bats and all that. No, kind. no, no. It was. I mean, every the, like the football pitches would be doubling up their clubhouse with the cricket team. Mm-hmm. So each clubhouse would have its bar, and you'd be straight into the bar after the match and mingling with the with the other team, and that would happen after every match. So it, it did have that good culture yeah. um, they're far from ice bats I think at the moment like, but uh, well, there's ice and something else but yeah, not the <laughs> no exactly exactly no it was, it was good it even got to the point where we had our own uh, Jaeger machine you know oh. those Jaeger machines where it can kind of I think it gives out like three shots of cooled Jaeger into the shot glasses we called it Adolf yeah. uh, for reasons that you, you end up quite messed up after it but we used to bring that with us to every game and like bring that into the clubhouse after and get the other team all drinking and stuff so um, I think that's still there that, that, that machine uh, Do you kind of miss the general like the involvement in that club in particular yeah, or yeah Yeah absolutely um, and it became kind of famous for its you know it's I think they used to say we, we win on the pitch and we lose off the pitch. That was the kind of the motto of the club. Like, but yeah, you miss all that camaraderie yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I still get to go over to Bermuda kind of twice a year. Yeah. And I get to jump in and play with one of the teams. Um, oh, right. So they can actually, you know, they can register you fairly quickly and, and get you if you want to play for the, the Premier team if they need yeah. you. But if not, I'll probably play for the, the Masters team when I go over when I go over next. Like so. And was there much interest from here, well, apart from Stephen, obviously, in more recent times, but in terms of the fact that you were playing for a club in Bermuda, but also given the name, and obviously Flanagan's is, a, is an Irish name, so yeah, it would have been yeah. but were you getting much interest from over here in terms of people kind of asking a few questions about the club and that? Not really, not really. Uh, I think I put up the odd photo on Facebook yeah. or whatever of uh, 
tackling, tackling a couple of the guys and stuff like. But uh, uh, no, not a lot. I mean, if you hear kind of Flanagan's onions, you think it's a, it's a pub team, even though it's a full member of their you know official yeah. association. Um, but yeah, you know, the national team has never really done too well. I don't think it's. Do you ever go to any of their games or yeah? Yeah, so they have a couple of either the friendlies or or a qualifying game in their national stadium. So yeah, yeah no, I've been, I've been to a couple of the games. Because yeah, they'd be in Concacaf, I guess, with uh, obviously the the big names in that are the Mexico's, Canada's, United States. Exactly. Yeah. They're kind of a slightly lower level. Quite, yeah. So I mean. You know, they're probably in a lower qualifying group again against you know, St. Martins or Cayman or some of the other kind of yeah, yeah. islands and stuff, so they never kind of make it. I don't think they've actually ever got to a, a, World, a World Cup qualifying proper even, but you know, it's, it's a tiny uh, it's a tiny country. Yeah, it's all about being involved anyway, I think yeah. it's kind of the, is the main thing. And obviously, given the fact it is, you know, the club is affiliated with the Bermudan FA, there is a CONCACAF Champions League, so in theory, theoretically, you could actually go all the way to that level. Yeah, no, in theory you could. Um, in theory, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not so much in practice. Like, I mean, yeah. there are a few clubs that seem to, to dominate there as well, I think, because the likes of Somerset Trojans and stuff would be... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be so, stronger. yeah, the, the good players would kind of filter through to kind of the, the top two top teams. teams yeah. Yeah. Yes. and then end up potentially playing in a Champions League of sorts yeah. well it's all very very fascinating um, and even I was looking back uh, because whenever we had Clyde Best on um, just in his book um, he was talking about playing for a club called Ireland Rangers as well mm. so there is a very there's a few little names and things there that would probably jump out to us yeah. whether it be Ireland Rangers Flanagan's Onions or whatever it is so that's yeah. all very uh very interesting, but uh, Sam, a shock to see. Thanks a million for uh, coming in and enlightening us. It's just a pity Stephen Doyle couldn't be here, so he couldn't embarrass him about his uh, past I know, footballing I could, ability. I could have told you a couple of stories about Twinkle Toes, but um, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll bring him in here for a special interview. Maybe the some next parts. time. Maybe yeah. the next time we we'll go through uh, his history of yeah. uh, soccer. But, uh, yeah, well, thanks very much. No problem at all. Thank all you. Right.